Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Um, today, I'm going to talk about gut health. I'm not going to give a lot of medical stuff because I'll remind everyone I have no medical background. But yesterday, I did something I haven't done in a very long time, and my body made me pay a price for it. So I thought I need to start researching something more. And what I found is that, um, in case I didn't say, tip 65, gut health, what can we do to make it better? Um, and what happened is last night, for some reason, when I was younger and up until probably the, yeah, up until the time of surgery, I drank a ton of milk, just a ton of it. And um, I don't know if I ever had any reactions to it, but it was just part of my everyday diet. I alone could probably drink more than a gallon of milk a day. Well, yesterday, for some reason, I was craving milk. And I picked up a half gallon of milk. And in the past, like after surgery, I only bought Fair Life milk. And um, yesterday I just bought uh, non-fat milk and I drank some of it. And boy, my stomach hurt. It really, really bothered me. So it made me start wondering, you know, what's different? I have a friend who has an autistic son and she does a lot of studying on gut health because she actually helps his symptoms by the foods he eats. So she's very, very knowledgeable. And every time I see her, she's talking about gut health and very curious about how my gut health may look different now that I've had surgery. She asked tons of questions because it was very interesting to her. Well, it made me start to think yesterday. I felt horrible after drinking barely a cup of milk. And um, so I looked into it and I thought, I, I, you know, there's so many pros and cons. You either love milk or you hate milk. Well, when I did some research, me and my research again, but um, when I did some research, I found that uh, as children, lactose going through your system requires something called lactase to get it through your body. And as babies and newborns, we have that automatically in our system. And there might, as we, as children are weaned, that lactase taste so instead of lactose, it's lactase, it disappears from the digestive tract. Um, I wonder if because I drank milk all the time up until bariatric surgery, did I continue to have that lactase in my system? And maybe now I don't because I felt horrible, and I mean horrible, horrible from drinking it. So do I have any desire to drink it again? No, and I hope I remember this. But it made me realize that there's so much going on in our bodies that we don't know about. And if I'm going to master this journal journey for the rest of my life, I'm going to have to keep myself educated. I know we're all different. Um, we're not medical. But if we start to question things and maybe talk to our doctors, we may learn what is the best tools for ourselves and for our body. So for me, I'm going to wonder if maybe that lactase that your body requires to process the lactose sugar in milk is not prevalent anymore in my body because I just felt horrible. Um, so it made me do a little more digging, and uh, it, I looked at an article in Healthline magazine, which was from August of 2020, and it was talking about what's unhealthy, what's an unhealthy gut, and how does a gut health affect you? And it was an article from August 25th of 2020, and it kind of talked about, and I've been hearing a lot about this, and my friend who um, has studied nutrition and has um, designations in Canada for nutrition, um, and like I said, she actually controls and helps her son with this nutritional information. And she's always talking about it. So I thought, I need to understand more. And I'm going to have to pick her brain when the borders open and I can visit with her again. But it kind of talked about the microorganisms in your gut. And Doc Fies talked about this too, that gut health, gut health. So it, I wanted to just get a cursory overview for my own purposes as to why maybe milk upset me yesterday. And it talked about that you could have a... Uh, imbalance in your gut um, that could cause you to have an upset stomach. So um, what's an unhealthy gut? Having an upset stomach, a diet high in sugar, because it says a diet high in sugar will actually uh, decrease the good bacteria in your stomach and it will cause cravings and it will cause inflammation that can lead to diseases. Um, weight changes that are unexplained as an as an, uh, identifier of possible gut health issues. Sleep disturbances or fatigue can be gut issue relationships. Skin irritation can be related to gut imbalances. And autoimmune, unhealthy gut can contribute, a gut, 
unhealthy gut can contribute to autoimmune issues. So it kind of really, food intolerances, and what they were saying about food intolerances is a food intolerance is different than a food allergy. And what they mean by a food intolerance is the food that your body could normally process, you may be intolerant to it right now because your body, your gut floras are out of balance. So again, I am not do a doctor, I am not medical. I've just been hearing a lot of talk about gut health and when I drank some milk yesterday and it made me feel horrid, it made me go, oh, well, you got something else you gotta look into and research. But so the seven things that tell you that you have a possibility of bad gut health are an upset stomach, that you have a diet high in sugar, and that diet high in sugar can decrease good bacteria, it can cause cravings, it can cause inflammation that leads to diseases. Unexplained weight changes can tell you you have bad um, gut bacteria. Uh, sleep disturbances and fatigue, skin irritation, um, unhealthy gut can lead to autoimmune issues, and then food intolerance, is just meaning that because your gut bacteria are out of balance, your body can't process certain things. And who knows, I, I don't know, am I low on lactase and that's why the milk bothered me? Or do I have some kind of an imbalance I need to look at? Again, I'm not medical, I'm just trying to identify ways that I can stay on top of my health. Um, I'm 155 plus pounds down, 35 plus during COVID, and I want this journey to continue. I want to have the best health of my life and educate myself and just share what I'm learning with you guys and take what, take what sounds important to you, research what sounds important to you, and talk over what sounds important to you with your own doctors. But the good news is they gave us some tips on what to do to improve gut health. And again, this was an article from Healthline Magazine on August 25th, 2020, and it's called, What's an Unhealthy Gut? How Gut Health Affects You. And what it said you can do to try to improve your gut health is lower your stress, get enough sleep, eat slowly, I guess so those little critters inside your gut can get to work on it, stay hydrated, back to the water, critical, stay hydrated. And then there's also talk about prebiotic and probiotic. And it's funny, my friend who, um, really has done amazing things for her son, talks a lot about prebiotic and probiotic. When I was talking to her earlier this week, she was talking about it, and I've heard Doc V talk about it. But gut, gut health seems to be very, very important and something that not many of us know about. So um, again, what can we do? We can lower stress, we can get enough sleep, we can eat slowly, we can stay hydrated. There might be a consideration for prebiotic or probiotic. I'm going to have to research more about what exactly is that because I don't totally understand. And then check for food intolerances. And maybe I'm now intolerant to milk. I don't know. But I know that that was the only thing that was unusual to what I eat. And boy, I felt horrible. So I want to live a life of adventures. I want to live a life full. I know I had the surgery and that I changed my diet so that I could do that. So I'm going to take a step every day to learn something new to make myself better. 155 pounds down, almost at that five-year mark. I don't want to undo all this hard work. I want to show gratitude to myself and to my body and to the medical communities that helped me to get here. So I hope that some of this information is useful to you. Again, just Take what is resonating with you and leave the rest behind. But we have to be our own best advocate. And I hope something useful, you found something useful here. But it does reiterate, keep, the, keep those sleep patterns strong and keep that water strong. So have a beautiful Friday and make this weekend count. We're, we're coming into spring. I know this uh, Sunday is uh, spring forward, so we're going to lose an hour. So make every minute count. And... Soon the sun's going to start to rise. Thank you very much and have a beautiful, blessed day.